What's up guys, it's Andrew from Motorcycles Off-Road, and in this video, I almost want to make a video that's in a response to another video I saw a couple months back, and it kind of stuck with me, and that's from Tyler from High Desert Hills. And basically, the topic of his video is why is everyone selling their Honda CRF300L or Rally? And also, he gave some good points, maybe it's because it's not as good as they thought on a highway, or maybe not as good as they thought off-road, etc, etc. But I also wanted to make my own take on this video, and I think for a lot of people, there's also a point to be made about this motorcycle, but not only this motorcycle, a few other ones that came into the market around the same time, and why you kind of see them for sale here and there. Now, firstly, I want to say when it comes to the 300L or the 300L Rally, particularly, I don't think a lot of them are for sale. And I do think that when you're in one of these Facebook groups and you see these bikes for sale, you, you're almost in like this echo chamber where you start to see it because that's where everybody's funneling this information, these sales. You start to think it's all the time when real in reality, it's all over the world. And even when I check today, there's not a single 300L or rally within 200 miles on Facebook marketplace that I could actually buy. So there's that. But I'm also a guy who sold my 300L. Though I don't know if I count because I sold my 300L as a lateral move to get a rally and to do a Patreon series of videos to make my trail bike, the KD, my street legal KDX 200, completely rebuild that while I had the 300L rally as a lightweight adventure bike. I can't really count myself as one of those people that sold the platform for, you know, one of the reasons stated. But just for a minute, let's consider, let's take a couple years back when this platform was released. And not only this one, but many other ones. You had the KLX 300, you had the new uh, KLR 650, you had the Tenere 700, you had the Honda CRF 300 platform. And all these released around a certain time. And this time was right after the pandemic. Now, I bought a lot of motorcycles during the pandemic, fixed them up and resold them and made a considerable amount of money because all of a sudden motorcycles were going for twice what they originally were. So if somebody had something in their garage, let's say for a thousand dollars, like um, the YZ426, I'd buy that from them, get it running, get it all detailed nice, and I would be able to sell it, you know, a week later for double the price, even more. A lot of people weren't going to work. A lot of people had a lot more free time. Some people had a lot more expendable income because they just weren't eating out and doing these other things. So they wanted to buy motorcycles. People fell in love again with the outdoors, with motorcycling, with hiking, with all these things that did not concern like being in an office setting or showing up to work every day or going to the mall or eating out. So it brought a lot of people closer to their families. There's actually a lot of divorces and stuff that I heard of. So, you know, people started to actually know each other. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is the demand for motorcycles was high. Not only that, structure that with also there was a lack of supply chain, which makes a big thing. So now you have a super high demand and a very low supply right? That led also to a lot of impulse buying. So if you went to Honda or your local store and they had one of these motorcycles, you had to buy it right there. Or if the dealer called you and said, hey, we got one of these in, or somebody gave you whatever it is, the information through the grapevine, if you did not buy that motorcycle within a couple hours, somebody else would be loading it up on their trailer and you wouldn't have an opportunity to buy this motorcycle again. Now back to the 300L platform, I see almost every day more people waiting for these bikes than i've ever seen people selling their bikes now why are they being sold well yeah some people did buy them on impulse buys and maybe it's not exactly what they wanted but i think the big factor here is life kind of went back to normal for most people you know they had all this free time they're out motorcycle maybe put 600 1200 miles on this motorcycle in that year and then all of a sudden now they find themselves back at work and for a lot of people they found themselves back in a position where maybe they had bills to catch up on maybe they ran up the credit card you know things like this and now that makes it more tempting to sell this motorcycle coupled with that you also have these bikes sitting in your garage and you're not riding them at all now another point to make is fomo fear of missing out so particularly when the market is the way it is now you have the honda crf 300l or my tenere for example if i sell my tenere today i can get exactly what i paid for it that's a rare occasion. Now, if you held on to the bike and it sat in your garage for another year, another year or two, the value of that piece of equipment that you didn't use or you think that you may not use will dramatically drop. 
So if you sell it now, you can give it to somebody, you can get your investment with nothing lost, and that's a good proposition. Whereas if it just sits there and you don't use it, now you're losing a lot. So that's another big point to consider. So not only did people jump into sales, they can also jump into selling with the same fear of missing out just so that led them to buy the motorcycle. So there's a lot of key factors to why you'll see these bikes for sale, in my opinion. And I feel like the pandemic with the supply chains and people buying these bikes had a lot to do with why they're so rare and you know, the demand for these motorcycles. Honda and Yamaha, they probably released these motorcycles thinking, okay, this is our projected sales. You know, because you gotta think, if they make a timeline on when they're gonna sell these motorcycles, it's years out. They're not putting, they're not that year just fabricating these bikes, no. They're like, okay, we're, we're projected to sell this many, this many, this many. They don't wanna oversaturate the market because if they do, then all of a sudden dealers and other people are selling them for less the value than MSRP. And at this current situation, you can't even get a bike at MSRP. I see tons and tons of people paying outrageous prices from dealer markup. Yes, a brand new motorcycle at MSRP would also have freight and would also have assembly fees, you know, tax title and tags. That's standard, right? But a lot of times you were able to negotiate off some of these fees just so the dealer can get the get the sale because they had like three or four of the same motorcycle sitting there. Now it's like they get one in every few months. There's 10 people waiting in line and there's no negotiation and they can gouge you on the price. So the pandemic has greatly changed the landscape of buying a motorcycle or in general, just buying a lot of goods and services. So I guess my major points are people had fear of missing out when it comes to buying them with low demand. Now people's lives are back together. So they're looking maybe to sell them and fear of missing out of not getting a good sale price if they hang on to the item longer than necessary. And these are the reasons why I think that you see a lot of these motorcycles for sale with low miles, modifications, and stuff like that. Well, I hope you found this little talking video interesting and see my take on it. I could be completely wrong. Let me know in the comments below what your opinion is. Also, check out Tyler on High Desert Hills. He has a little over a thousand subscribers. Let's help him grow. And if you want a rally t-shirt, check out the website and also check out our Patreon. Tons of free stuff there and tons of new videos coming out basically a weekly full video on the Patreon every week. So thanks for watching guys. My name is Andrew and this is Motorcycles Off-Road. Stay safe out there guys. Almost cut around underneath me.